God, I thank God for all that I've been so patient. Thank you so very, very much. Now, we couldn't come into this atmosphere, leave this atmosphere without a word. And I know that a lot of word has been said, but you see, uh, Pastor Melita have um, this celebration is not just about her, but it's also about us. And so it is very crucially important that a word come forth. I know the servant of the Lord is going to be succinct. Amen. A radio ministry time. Because there's another part, you see. So we need to get to the other part. Okay? So stand with me. One party, one spirit, one faith, one Lord, one people, one nation. Praise the Lord. One party, one spirit. Right in this midst of celebration, Lord, there is someone to heal, someone to encourage, someone to strengthen, someone to, Lord, bring into relationship with you. The Lord who kept um, Pastor Melita is waiting to keep a young person from going into the, the, the pitfall of the enemy to be trapped in sin, to be trapped in fear. Here in worry, I thank you, Lord, that as your word come forth tonight, there shall be a great manifestation and release in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It is so good to be here in God's house. Said, Amen. I don't want to tremble anything. Hallelujah. Please bear with me. I'm getting... I want to get these things out of the way because I know the enemy is wicked. You might be true. <laughs> Amen. But I want to give honor to the Spirit of God and I thank Him for His presence in our lives. Truly the Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. And we are all here today to celebrate God, the God in this wonderful woman of God. And truly we are honored to be able to honor her now. My mother always says it's best to give flowers when someone can smell them. Amen. Amen. And uh, you know, one of the things that we understand is that the Word of God tells us that there is a man called Joseph of Ar Arimathea. And Joseph of Arimathea was the one who helped the body of Jesus, well, took the body of Jesus and placed the body in his tomb. And we never hear anything more about him. He, he came into Jesus' life when Jesus was dead. But the woman who washed the feet of Jesus, the Bible said that her name would be remembered forever. Whenever we read, we would remember this woman. And sometimes we want to run ahead and celebrate people at the funeral, people that you've never heard of before. They all come out of the woodwork. Everybody has something to say. But we are here today to celebrate this woman of God in her life. And so I greet you, Pastor Dixon. God bless you. I love you from the day we met. We just fell in love. And I think we met um, 
uh, through my book, Don't Waste Your Pain. And then you introduced me to your beautiful daughter, Dulcie, who we've been friends since, and then we've become friends with the family, Sonia, and the whole family just love you all so very much, amen. To the pastors in the house, to the bishops, um, and all of God's people, all of God's people, all in your respective places. There's a young man sitting behind me. His voice sounds like an angel. If we had more time, maybe we could have had him to come sing, because I know who he is. But he can sing. <laughs> Amen. He can sing. This brother here can sing. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want to greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And thank you so much on behalf of the family for coming out um, and showing her how much we love her and we appreciate her. And Pastor, we can never, we can never find the words to tell you how much. To say I love you or we love you doesn't seem enough. Uh, but we love you and we appreciate you for all of what you've done for your service to be able to stand. And we know that there are so many stories that you never have told or spoken about. Um, so many trials and tribulations that you've been through. And I don't mean to keep you long, um, but I just want you to know that we honor you in our presence here today. We want you to know that um, uh, for every, you know, th there's a word in the scripture that says when God speaks to Abraham, he says to Abraham, I will bless them that bless you and curse him. It doesn't say them. It curse him who curses you. The them are always more than the him. Sometimes we dwell on the things that are against us. But because you dwell on the them, the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Then you just can't stand it. And I honor you, woman of God. This July will be 40 years since I've been in ministry. Yeah. Amen. So I'm running you down, Pastor. In fact, I'm running. I'm trying to run the opposite direction. I've got to tell you the truth. But God, you know, this whole, this whole time starts so Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. And I have to say, Pastor, it, maybe you're the same. If it wasn't that Jesus had a hold on our life, we would have run from this position. But, but, we, but we're still here. Let me just leave this word in your spirit. When I was trying to you know, ruminating on what would I say? What what can I say? Don't skip so lovely. This is a beautiful woman of God. This is my friend. This is my friend. She she is an inspiration to me in so many ways and um, such wisdom, such depth. I just love this woman of God. She's beautiful and she's inspired me in so many ways. And just when I think that, um, okay, I've had it, I, I'm not doing it, the phone will ring and it will be Dulcie. And uh, Pastor Brown, <laughs> she's got something to say to me to inspire me. People of God, God bless you. All the mothers in the house, praise the name of Jesus. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. When I was trying to think about what would I uh, bring today, the words kept on say, coming to me, tetelestai, tetelestai. And tetelestai is the Greek word for it is finished. The Bible tells us then, and I'm not going to keep you long, but the Bible tells us that these were, there were seven words that Jesus, seven things that Jesus said when he was going and leaving us. And one of them is, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. And when you look at it is finished, it means tetelestai in the Greek. And it's really quite interesting this is because Pastor says she's retiring. And Dulcie says you're not retiring, you're rewiring. I love that. And because that fed into my message really well, because I was kind of like any of us who are preachers, we will know that you kind of sway between messages. But when I heard that, I said, I'm going to run with this. Tetelestai. It is finished. When Jesus was on the cross then, there were things that Jesus had to say. And we have to understand that in our lives and our walk with God, there will be things that you will have to do. 
And Jesus said, I have come to fulfill the law and the prophets. And you have to understand that before your mother met your father, God knew you. Uh, he speaks to Jeremiah and he says to Jeremiah, before you were formed, in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you. Yeah, God. And that excites me because it means that there is nothing about our lives that God does not know about. God is not going to, when you pray, say, oops, I never knew that was going to happen to you. Oops is not in God's vocabulary. God will never say, oops, because God is in your past. He is in your present and he is in your future. There is nothing about God that he is um, he's surprised by anything concerning our lives. When we go to God in prayer then, we are not going to God in prayer to inform God of what's happening to us. No, because God already knows what is happening to you before it happened to you. Ah, God. The Bible says then that Jesus took bread uh, before he was crucified. He was doing Lord's Supper. And in the midst of the Lord's Supper, he instantly. In the midst of Passover, he instituted Lord's Supper. And Jesus took bread, the Bible said, and he blessed it and he broke it. Now, it has always occurred to me, Jesus blessing the bread. The bread was Jesus. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. So when Jesus took the bread and he blessed it, the Bible said, he blessed it and he break it. God will never break you before he blesses you. He will never send you into something that you are unprepared for. So pastor, as you're about to move into a new season in your life, I want to bring you then to the text without even reading it, where Jesus says it is finished. But was it really finished? No, it was finished. That season of his life was finished. Uh, that season when people could mess with him was finished. That season where people could spit on him was finished finished. That season when he had to be a lamb was finished. That season where he had to be a sheep being uh, done before a shearer was finished. A season where he had to be a lamb being led to the slaughter was finished. And a new season was coming. So when Jesus was on the cross and he said tetelest I or it is finished he wasn't saying it is finished in desperation it wasn't a cry of desperation or weakness it wasn't a cry where he was broken because even though he was broken in his physical but in his spiritual oh my god he was stronger uh, than ever he was because the best thing that you can do with a seed is bury it the best thing that you can do with a seed is put it in the ground. The word of God said, if a corn of wheat fall into the ground and dies, it abides alone. Oh, pastor, I'm excited for you because you're about to be transformed. I don't know when we were kids, we used to watch this thing called Transformers. And it used to be this little battered, little battered car. And you would look at the car and you'd think there was nothing to it. And what they used to call these cars were transformers. Now I'm showing my age. Some of you maybe never seen it before. But it was a little battered car. And it was called a transformer. And so you would underestimate the car. Because you thought by the outward appearance it didn't look like anything. And so maybe you'd go up to the car and when you'd watch the film you'd see the car. But all of a sudden when it reached a certain time it would... And it would begin to change. It would change from a master car to a robot. It would change to a warrior. It would change to something. It would change. Oh, I need to tell Pastor, you're about to change. Oh, you think you've met her? You've seen nothing yet. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. 
Uh, let me calm down. And so the Bible says that Jesus is on the cross. And Jesus says, it is finished. What he was saying was, my season of being a lamb, my season of being a sheep is finished. I'm about to go into my season of the lion, of the tribe of Judah. I'm about to go into my own season. I'm about to go into a season where I will Jesus 
begins to roar. He roars. She's coming out. 
She's coming out. Somebody give God praise. She's coming out in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been in situations where you've been locked down and locked in and it's like you're living Groundhog Day over and over and over again going through the same thing over and over and over again. It's like you can't get out. It's like, God, what's happened to my life? Who am I? What's going on with my life? And God said, you're there for a reason. I'm transforming you. I'm changing you. I need you to know that when Joseph went into the prison, Pastor, he went in as a dreamer, but he came out as an interpreter. Would be easy. Shut up, come on. Your words will return to you for it. 
So all of us in here, God, not because of a flyer, not because of an invitation, an earthly invitation, but because you invited us here to show us, to tell us. Ah, Lord God, to look at your woman servant, your handmaiden, to celebrate her part, but understand that we too would have been called for such a time as this. I pray, I pray, God, that someone will understand right now, dear God, that it is not the end. It is not the end, dear God, but they're about to move into a new season in you. That as one season closes off, they will understand that a new season is about to appear. Bless. Uplift. Turn around. Transform, I pray. In the name of Jesus. I just and give up.
Reverend Pastor Malita Dixon. Amen. Pastor, I have a, a certificate for you. I'm going to read it. This is a Minister's Long Service Honorary Award. Oh, wow. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for you shall serve the Lord Christ. That's in Colossians. Yeah. Senior Pastor Melita Constantia, Constantia Dixon, in appreciation of 66 years' work in the church ministries of apostleship, prophetic ministry, evangelism, pastoral care, teaching and preaching, Praise, prayer, and deliverance ministries. Amen. Recognizing your tireless service, your infectious enthusiasm, your boundless love, and for fanning the flame of faith for so many. The conduct is exemplary. Come and receive it, Pastor. Dixon used to come up to church, got a prophecy up in Sheffield and, and support me in NTMI. Way back, Sunday used to come too. And we used to have a great time. We still have, we still have a great time. But, uh, you know, she's been around for me for a long, year, long, long time. Uh, and she's made me, in a sense, the person I am today. You know, it's through people like uh, Pastor Melita Dixon uh, steering me on the right path. I might not have been here, I might have been in prison or doing something, you know, but it's through uh, ministers like this, uh, which has uh, guided me and put me on the right path and so on. And, you know, it's a great honor and privilege for me to award you this. Uh, I oversee 125 ministers around the country from all different denominations. Uh, and uh, Pastor Melita is one. And, uh, yeah, Pastor Dorothy as well. Although they almost see me, to be honest. <laughs> They're my seniors. <laughs> They're my seniors, really. Uh, but I'd like to say, and I've got a word I'm going to share, and I've just a few things I'd like to say, uh, if that's okay. Yes, we're going to... Yeah, but we're going to be here too long. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we're, we're, I, I have another award, really, which I'd like to pass on to Sonia. Because Sonia is taking over the baton. Well, when's this one? After you talk. After I talk. Okay. Okay. We're going to do that. Okay, so please be seated. I'm just going to touch on something very quickly. Um, very quickly. I, I, met a, I met a woman. She was eight years old. Eight. And she's got married for the fourth time. I said, Wow. I can't believe it. I said four times. She said, yeah. Did she do well? Oh, she did amazing. I says, you wouldn't mind telling me what your first husband's job was. She says, well, yes, in, in well, what it were, in my early 20s, I married a, a banker. I said, okay. And then in my early 40s, I married a circus ringmaster. I said, wow. And she said, in my early 60s, I married a preacher. And then in my 80s, I've just married a funeral director. <laughs> she said, yeah, I married one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the Holy Spirit is resident. But is he president? Amen. Some of us have got one foot in and one foot out. You know, we need to be serious tonight. But I've got a word for you. It's, a, it's just a short word, but praise God. I'm remembered in Acts 28, it's Paul. He's on a boat in the middle of the sea. 276 people with him. Disciples as well. His disciples who he's leading to God and bringing on. Not the Lord's disciples. But what happened were, you know... An angel appeared and said, this boat is going to be shipwrecked. Yes. And it's going to get smashed. Yes. 
But nobody will lose their life. So whoever can swim to that island, swim. And whoever can't swim, get a piece of wood and float there. Amen? The island was Melita, known as Malta. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what reminded me. Uh, so praise the Lord. So it says that when they reached the island, all 276 of them, it says the natives were welcoming. And they received them well. But it was cold. So what they did, they started picking up firewood. Yes. Bundles of wood to get a fire going yes. to keep warm. Yes. And it said that as Paul picked up a bundle of wood, a viper, lethargic viper, a snake, came and oh, latched yes. onto his arm. Yes. Amen? It latched onto him. And people looked. And thought, gosh, you're going to die. You've had it. But what did Paul do? He shook it off. And I want to talk to you just for a few moments about shaking off the snakes. How many snakes are in your life? How many people have you had to shake off? How many things have you had to shake off? Pastor Maliti, you've not got this far. You've had to shake things off. You shake off. You shake it off. In Jesus' name, you shake off the cancer. You shake off the dementia. You shake off the Alzheimer's. You shake off the depression. And the mental health. And the, and the sicknesses. You shake them off. You've got to believe in what that scripture says. I am the Lord God that healeth thee. We've got to believe it. Amen? So, you know, there's times when, you know, we can get bitten privately and nobody knows about it. And it's okay because nobody's seen. We're not on the show. But when you get bitten publicly, oh, everybody's watching. And they're waiting for you to fall. They're waiting for you to fall and, and, and collapse and drop down dead. And that's what people do with us, you know, through life. You know, they ring us and say, hi, Pastor Dave, how you doing? And all of the time, they, they're talking about me behind my back. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's people in the church yeah. wanting to know all about me, yeah. where I live, where I work, yeah. how much money I've got. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, there's so many private detectives in church <laughs> than in the police station. <laughs> oh, yes. Don't go looking so cute because there's so many private detectives. <laughs> oh, yes. They want to know everything about you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I turn up in a new soap. They think I'm stealing the offering. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. I give somebody a lift. They think I'm having an affair with them. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I do a wake at the, at, for a funeral. I walk out of the wake with a collar on. It's always oh, drinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's true, Pastor. People stand in judgment. And over the years, you know, we've had to shake. Pastor Lita has had to shake things off. You know, she's not just got to this senior position for nothing. She's had to deal with some serious stuff, you know. Can't pay the bills, still standing. Got people against me, still standing. My kids got off the rails, still standing. Yeah, I've got an, an hospital appointment, serious one, I'm still standing. I'm trying to run two jobs, still standing. I've just had a phone call from abroad, somebody's died. Still standing. I've got to get on a plane and go to Jamaica or Trinidad. Still standing. You know, we have to stand against things. We have to stand. Look, listen, stop sitting on the premises and start standing on the promises. Amen. Let's stand on the word of God. When we read the Bible, do we read it for information or transformation? We should be reading it for transformation. Amen. Praise the Lord. We know about the fivefold ministry. We know about that. Pastor Melita taught me that. You know? The fivefold ministry. The thumb is the apostle. It goes outwards and it plants things. It sets up things like this place. Like Pastor Melita. So that's the thumb, the apostle. Where it can minister to the rest of the body. You've got the prophet or the prophetess, the forefinger. Points the way, gives vision, gives direction to the church you've got the center which is the evangelist outstretched the most for outreach center of attention but the biggest one outstretched 
You've got the ring finger. A wedding ring is put on that finger because that finger has a nerve which runs through to your heart. That's the pastor. And the pastor is married to the rest of the body. And the small finger is the teacher. And the teacher brings balance. And that is the fivefold ministry. You'll find it in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. You know, we're all called into, into some sort of ministry to, to win souls. The greatest service a man or woman can render to God is to win a soul. You know, and, and today, you know, I wanna, I'm going to pray for people. I'm going to give some words of knowledge. And I'd like to come and respond. Don't miss it today. You know, believe it and receive it or doubt it and walk out that door without it. And many do. Don't miss it. What God's going to do. You know, it said, God says, I will change your name. You shall no longer be called wounded, outcast, lonely, or afraid. I will change your name. Your new name shall be confidence, joyfulness, overcoming one, faithfulness, friend of God. One who seeks my face. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto thee. We've got to get in a place where we seek the Lord. You know, let us seek the Lord. Let us really seek the Lord. Because there's a, it says in Isaiah that there's going to be a time when he's not going to be able to be found. So let's seek him now while we still can. In this time of grace, this is the end time of the end time. We're one minute to twelve. This is the last final reaping. So praise the Lord. We need, we need a final hour. We need to get into a place with God. In other words, get right or get left. Amen? Get right or get left. Which side will you be sitting on in eternity? Smoking or non-smoking? Oh, oh, come on. Stop being a Stevie Wonder. A part-time lover. Amen? Oh, yeah. Part-time lover. Let's give everything to God. Let's give it all to God. Amen? Let's be serious. Let's be serious with the Lord. Pastor Melita. I just want to congratulate you on 66 years of ministry. It's not over. God is resharpening your tools. Amen. It's, yes, praise the Lord. And I just believe that, uh, you know, the people, the seeds that you've sown over the years into so many people's lives. You know, thousands of people have come to know the Lord through you. Such a great woman of faith, a mighty woman of valor, a, a, a real woman of God. A lioness that roars. I've been saying that today. Praise the Lord. Let the lioness roar. This is the year of the lioness. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank you for all you're doing uh, here in this uh, in, in Leicestershire and in um, prayer, 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 prayers and deliverance ministries. Um, at this time, um, you come, Pastor, and come and just take over on this side. Don't go too far. Praise the Lord. Thanks for your patience. I know we we're running over time, but you brought it all. Thank you so much. Um, we come to the last part of the service, and um, uh, we talk about handing over the baton. Amen. Who is willing? Who is in the race? Who is behind that I can serve? Take it. Elisha. Elijah needed Elisha. He was there. Okay, and so we run the race at a point, and um, it comes to a point when they talk about retiring. I don't believe in retiring. I believe in stepping back and give way. I believe in standing still, what is salvation of the Lord. So that's what I felt in my spirit to do. I'm not going anywhere until God ready, but I won't be at the demand. Because ministry like this, small ministry, need physical demands. It means evangelism, it means to run around and do things. That doesn't mean that you give up the in race. But it, it's the footwork. You need someone to do the physical footwork and also be at the place willing 
took the chance to be a disciple. Amen? Amen. And so if we look back in the scripture, God doesn't call people who are perfect, who are qualified. He calls people who are willing and available. That's all God wants. He will do something else with, when you come, being willing and available. He will do the rest. He will bring out the perfection. He will bring out the anointing. Call and be chosen. So, we've come to a place. I've got the church is here. We have, after lockdown and before lockdown, we were diggling. But I don't believe it's dead at all. Amen. It shall rise. The seed is there. Amen. You know, they trampling, trampling down the seed, but they have a wet time to rise up. Who is willing? God is looking for a man, a person to fill the gap. There's an open gap. Who is willing? Who is willing? There's a round card in the ticket. Yes. There's provision. You're ready to kill Isaac. One son. I have five. But there's a round, thank you sister, there's a round that is caught, available. Abraham didn't bring any lamb up there, but it was available. He, it was available to me, he was instructed. So I feel in my spirit, I've got five children, and if you choose Shelton or Dorsey, the other four are there to be a part of this heritage. That's right. This lineage, um, who was it? Gideon said, I'm the least above the clan. I'm the least among my family. That's the one. But there's no least one here if you're willing and available. Some are in different cities and they're not available every week. But I've got Sonia here that is available and willing to work and to take and to go forward. But she can't do it on her own. She needs your support. She needs your help. And we talk about don't let it die. If you see me falling down and take away my stick, what do you expect me to do? I'm going to fall. But if you see me falling, and every now and then you can brace me up. You must see a banana leaning to fall down. You just brace it up and it's time. So I want to ask you to pray for us. Pray for Sonia. I'm going to recommend her. But she need your help. The family need to support her. And they are not cast away, they are not redundant, they are available to come around because the part, when I think of what they have done, they were my first congregation. My children were my first congregation. Dulcie on the keyboard, uh, Basil on the drum, uh, Shenton and all the bass guitar, one of you, uh, Sonia and Judy, they were main singers. Until they all start singing and they named themselves the Dixons. All over England. There was on demand. Now they've grown up in the different places, but they're not home. They just want to resurrect. Rewind, is it? Rewire. Rewire it. And let it kingdom again. So when the others can come and be a part, it's invitation for all to see everybody. You're a part of this. It's a legacy. It's a legacy. And it's God's work. And we need you. We need your community to come and work. She can't do it on her own. If you don't come along and be a part, then it will die. But there's good in it. Be good in it. So don't let it die. Don't despise small things, small beginnings. There's good in it. And we are more than able, we are more than conquerors to Christ that love us, gave himself for us. Shall we stand as we do this quickly? I don't know quick quicker, but I want to recommend her, pray with her, anoint her, and give her the, the opportunity to be willing and go forth. Her husband is dear. Well, she's been the one chosen, but he will be supporting her. So we want him to come along yes. as well, yes, he because he will be supporting. Yeah, he has to be. Yes, yeah. 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 Just to support and to get. Yes, yeah, yeah. So where is Brother Len? Reverend Len, you were around? I want you to blow this off. Show for. And these two grandsons are here today. I've got nine, but these are two special ones that are available. Let's bless them. And give them thanks. Don't you see your mind? And you was a little preacher. What happened? 
We are praying for you. He's still there. Got his church out. And drum, where's the drummer? That's your place. Stay there. Amen. Amen. So we're going to just have you scriptures. Pray yes, for her. I'm just going to ask the rest of ministers and bishops to come along as we pray for her and anoint with oil. This is not an ordination, it's just a recommendation and that you go forth and to do what you can, be willing and obedient to the Lord and his work. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. Amen. Gonna annoy you. Oh, okay. it's okay. Can I have a double portion? Can I have a double portion? A double double portion. One double portion. Double double portion. Amen. 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 Yeah, so you just pick on that to receive from the Lord. No, she's okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, Sonia, just anoint you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Brother, what's your name? Gary, I just anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shandara kira sundra baba baba kia baba kia anda landara kira sira baba baba kia baba kia anda mamba baba kia sundra baba baba kia anda landara kira sundra baba 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 kia landara kira sundra landa shi baba Come on, Baba Bakio, the Sunda Baba Baba Bakia, the Sunda Bakia, Landa Raki, Kikia, Sunda Bakia, Koko Bayanda. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Sonia and for Gary, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that as they take over, Lord, in a sense, the baton, Lord, that, Lord, you'll be with them, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they'll not have to look, but people will come, Lord. People will come, and they'll be blessed, Lord. We pray for praise, prayer, and deliverance ministries, Lord, that this will continue in Jesus' name, and it'll go from strength to strength, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, your word says, I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase, Lord. So, Lord, we pray for increase, increase in this church, increase in their lives, Lord. Lord, we pray for the fruit of the Spirit, Lord, to flow in Jesus' name. Love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and faithfulness, Lord. And, Lord, we pray for the gifts of the Spirit, Lord, faith, wisdom, knowledge, healing, miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, discernment, Lord, and prophecy, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you have your way in these servants, Lord, and that this church will go from strength to strength, Lord, and that people will come, Lord, and I want to thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that all what's been said and all what's been done, let the yes be yes and the no be no, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've called them to be the head and not the tail. In Jesus' name I pray. Bless them in this ministry, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Presented at Praise Brand Deliverance Ministries, 20 Dillon Road, New Parks, Leicester, early 3, 9 p.m. On the 20th day of April, 2024, Mentor is ministering within the Eagle Eye Minister, Ministry to Ministers International, Accessory Ministry, Senior Safeguarding Office, Daniel S. Smith, Overseeing Minister, Senior Pastor, Minister D.C. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Sonia, that's from the bishops, uh, the seal uh, that you're a minister in training at this time. And uh, we'll be around to support you. All the ministers, I'm sure, will ring you up and check up on you both and just make sure it's and dropping on, on you from time to time. Uh, so praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Congratulations and God bless. Praise the Lord. We're going to close it now. Praise the Lord. Just two times. It's a new season. You could sing that with me. I'm not quite sure. It's a new season. It's a new season. A fresh anointing.